Hey guys and welcome. The Callisto Protocol was a hugely anticipated game across the gaming world and on December the 2nd it finally launched globally. With Glenn Schofield leading the charge with the game, very similar to what the team did with the Dead Space series. Everyone was buzzed and hyped for a new horror game that gets your heart racing moving through the hallways, climbing through literal sewers, and fighting huge two-headed monsters. However, today in this video, I want to focus primarily on the storyline of Callisto Protocol, what it's all about, exactly what happened, and go from there. I finished the game yesterday and... I do have a lot to say about the game, which will be coming in a future review in the next couple of days. However, I quite enjoyed the story overall. Obviously, there will be spoilers throughout this video, so don't watch it if you plan on playing it for yourself and want to be surprised with the storyline. And there'll be a shorter, more basic level explanation coming out on the channel tomorrow around the story. This is going to be a very detailed look at exactly what happened in the game from the start, the characters that we come ac across, and how events transpire throughout. Tomorrow we'll be just diving into the storyline and detailing it there as well. So be sure to stick around for that if that's what you want to see. But leave a like on today's video if you do go ahead and enjoy. It'd be very, very much appreciated. And well, let's subscribe to the channel as well if you're brand new or a returning viewer. We're trying to hit 20,000 subscribers before the end of the year. I really hope we can try and do that. If we can, that would just be absolutely amazing. And if you've played Callisto Protocol or seen some gameplay, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below on what you think of the game. Without further ado, though, everyone, let's dive straight in to the explanation. The Callisto Protocol starts by showing the player an outbreak plaguing a city based on the moon of Europa. A lady within a mask is walking around the place, seeing the sheer destruction this outbreak has caused to all of the people there. Particles floating around just showing how infectious and contagious that this infection really is. Bodies everywhere, blood all over the ground, the walls and the roads when suddenly she's ambushed by one of these creatures from within the shadows. She breaks away luckily, and then she stares into the CCTV camera, and it breaks away like it's a news report. This woman is called Dani Okamura, and she's the leader of a terrorist organization named The Outer Way. The media blamed The Outer Way terrorist organization for this outbreak and this incident on Europa. Dani and the rest of the organization are heavily wanted, and if found, will be brought in for questioning, and potentially even worse. This was a news broadcast being watched on a monitor by Jacob and Max. Both Jacob and Max are freelancer cargo freight pilots that transport goods across space between different planets. We can see that in this cutscene, there seems to be some tension between the two characters, and that something doesn't quite seem right. They were in the middle of transporting cargo from the moon of Callisto to Europa, the planet that just had an outbreak. But something doesn't quite seem right about these runs. The back and forth from Callisto to Europa, the additional security that they've seen and they've never seen before when going to Callisto or going near it, and how the attacks happened during and after the first couple of runs. However, Jacob insisted that it's nothing and just kind of shrugs it off to Max. This was a prison, Jacob said, meaning that the additional security makes sense. The attacks were the outer way and it was reported and found out on the news, as their track record shows they've been hitting targets all over Europa for the past six months. After this job is over, both of them will have to never work a day in their lives again, due to the payment being so, so good. However, suddenly on the dashboard, a yellow light triggers with a problem in the cargo bay. Jacob gets up to look around and the packages all look secure. However, after investigating a bit further into the cargo bay, the ship had been breached and boarded. It turns out that Danny and her terrorist organization, Outer Way, had breached the ship in search for the cargo. Max opens the hangar doors, sucking her team out of the back. However, Danny breaks the glass door, resulting in us also getting pulled back into the hangar bay. We luckily clamber onto one of the panels on the ground and we climb into our seat and crash land onto the surface of Callisto.
We awaken sometime later. The ship completely trashed. We unclip our seatbelt and turn to our right to see if Max had also made it. But unfortunately, he didn't. He was still alive in the chair, really struggling with his jaw disconnected and the side of his face looking really, really rough. Telling Jacob why didn't he listen to him. Until suddenly, the ship was cut into by a security robot on Callisto. The two robots walk in alongside another human named Captain Ferris. He hands us a mask and walks outside. All seems fairly well at this point. No threats or no threats that were given by Ferris. It, everything looked fairly normal. The security robots searched the ship for any other life forms or existing people on board. And that's where they found Danny. The robot brought her outside and Jacob was furious as she was the reason his ship crashed and also resulted in his first officer, Max, to die. Ferris radioed the warden about the crash into the two survivors, Jacob and Danny. Danny was surely going to prison, right? But... Jacob did nothing wrong here, and was even transporting cargo from this prison to Europa. However, the warden instructed to Ferris to bring both of them in, which left Jacob and the player very surprised. were transported into a prison given a prison number 532-521. During this conversation, the warden shows in a hologram. Joyce. Every choice in your life has led you here. To this moment. To this place. The only place where you truly belong. To find the one thing that has always been missing. The Warden welcomes us to Black Iron Prison in a strange way, almost like this is going to be the end of a prisoner's life here with no way out or way of escape. They call Callisto the Dead Moon, but more on this later. Jacob is escorted into a section where he undergoes a medical procedure to insert a core device into the back of his neck, resulting in him to flatline for a short moment. A serum was injected into the side of his neck which revitalizes Jacob and it acted as a health bar throughout the game, so I thought this was a really cool touch and a good way of introducing the health bar. Jacob passes out and suddenly wakes in his prison cell. There's a hell of a commotion outside though, with a hologram of the warden standing there telling all of the inmates to report to the cell block. We find our cell door is also open. We pull it to one side and walk outside. Decapitated bodies, commotion everywhere, security robots malfunctioning, even the guards in the tower going crazy. Something wasn't right here. We move downstairs and meet someone named Elias. Elias had been here for a very, very long time, around half of his life, he said, and he knew the prison like the back of his hand. Elias hands us a wrench shiv, and our first objective is to release him from this cell, as he can help us get out of here. We make our way to the control room to open the gate, and we see two prisoners there fighting one another. They come onto us and try to kill us, but Jacob managed to get the better of them both. However, suddenly Jacob turns around and... We see something that just wasn't human at all. We luckily fight and kill it, but what the hell was that? We release Elias and tell him what we saw. He kind of thought we were a bit crazy at first, 
But we needed to meet him at the watchtower, and in order to do that, we had to find our way around this gate. The control panel was completely fried, and there was no other way of opening it, so the long way around it was. However, we take the lift downstairs, and still, things really do not feel right here. This doesn't just seem like a normal prisoner outbreak. This is much more than that. The hallway's all completely dark, lights flickering on and off. Blood stains the floors with growths covering the metal panels. Even seeing the state of some of the prison cells and how these inmates lived. Some probably had a bit of a bad stomach the night before as well. <laughs> However, suddenly, we start to hear a commotion in the distance. The security systems came back online and Elias warned us of this. And all of the security robots have started hunting the prisoners and these beings. And just straight up killing them. But why would the robots be instructed to kill not only these infection forms, but also the prisoners? Is someone trying to cover something up here? So we finally reached the medical sector, and Dr. Caitlin Marler, the one at the beginning of the game that gave us the core in the back of our neck, recorded a set of audio logs that we were able to capture and find out. The one we found in this instance mentioned that when we reached Black Iron, Warden Cole gave her the go-ahead to start this program again. Unfortunately, we got no details as to what this program actually is at the time. But could this be the reason for the outbreak? So we finally reached the tower, and stood there overlooking what's going on in the prison, and trying to get control again is Ferris. We try to sneak past him and Ferris caught us in the end and he starts questioning us. Ever since we crashed here, everything started. What were we transporting? Why did the warden want us alive? Ferris was none the wiser as to what's happened here. And in order to try and get away from him, we opened the door and let two infection forms into the room. Him killing one of them and the other tackling him out of the window. We meet Elias in security and he wants out of this place big time. The only way to do this is to get to the hangar bay and find a ship and get out of here. There are none based on Callisto, but there are multiple ships situated in the orbit of the moon. Elias has found an inmate somewhere within the prison that has the skill set to call one of those ships down in order for us to escape and get the hell off this planet. However, the only issue is, the prisoner is based within the shoe. Maximum security. Elias has been here a very long time, so he's got the privileges with the base within his core that we wouldn't have, so he is able to simply walk through security. However, we, with just turning up here, need to find another way. On our way down there though, Jacob takes a wrong turn and finds a room hidden below the prison. A room which looks like where a court would probably meet? Flags and banners surrounding the place, with the tables and chairs, notepads all around it too. There's a voice log at the very top of the room though, in what looks to be the master chair. We pick it up and it's none other than Duncan Cole, the warden. Within this audio log it shows that the program has now started or been restarted. Dr. Marler is at the head of that and evolution doesn't just happen within the lab. It happens within the wild. It turns out that Duncan Cole is the new warden of Black Iron Prison and has been fairly recently, but he doesn't always go by the book. He replaced someone who a lot of people respected and thought more of, but this was the perfect place for Cole to start his new project or program. And again, more on this later. We finally reach the shoe and free the prisoner, not knowing that this prisoner was Danny Okamura, the leader of the outer way. As we walk into the cell, she quickly switches with us and pulls us straight in, shutting the door and trapping us on the way out. Elias didn't know who she was or the history between them both. However, suddenly as she walks away, lockdown initiates and the prison cell is moved. We find our way out into a room where we can see our exit plan. We see the hangar in the distance, which is the overall goal, However, before that, we need to make our way to the Habitat Dome and take the tram over to the hangar bay. 
After fighting our way through the dome and even going down a slip and slide <laughs> and almost falling to our death, we make it to the dome successfully. The skybox here is absolutely gorgeous. In this game, man, it's just so damn good. But this place looks a little bit freaky. A dark indoor forest with things rustling in and between the trees as we walk through. Nah, I'm okay. <laughs> I'd rather stay here. We make our way to the tram station and climb up to Elias. As we walk into the station though, Jacob begins to question Elias about what he's in here for and why. He wants to know if he's going to kill him or if he can trust him. And Elias mentions that he was in fact in for murder at one time, but it was a very long, long time ago. He's learned from it and he now needs to own it. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. However, when Jacob moves, there's Ferris standing behind him. Looking very worse for wear. Ferris opens the hangar doors, sending us flying outside. We traverse through the blizzard on Callisto in search of Elias, who had landed somewhere outside. He sets a distress signal in his suit and we finally spot him. Elias' mask is fully smashed, and he simply cannot go any further. Elias places his hand on our chest and thanks us dearly for helping him get out of that prison. Because of you. However, suddenly a truck shows up behind us and Danny steps out after tracking Elias' emergency beacon. She removes Elias' core after he died so that she could learn everything about the prison and everything that he knows and eventually escape. She tells Jacob to walk to the hangar if she wants to go with them and just drives off. <laughs> so that's what we do, make our way to the hangar. We eventually make our way to the hangar and find that Danny's in a bit of a touch of trouble and she needs our help clearing out the enemies. She suddenly now starts to trust us for whatever reason. <laughs> no idea why. After she just left us stranded in the middle of nowhere. Even going to the extent of giving us her shotgun. We need to open the main gate in order to get us into the hangar. Whilst Danny fixed the snowmobile. We were successful in doing so and finally we reached the hangar. We called for the ship and could see that it was flying towards us. And readying to land on the dock. However behind us out walks the warden. He knows both of our names but especially Danny's, telling us that her journey was especially long, all the way from Europa. Danny was stunned. How does Cole know about Europa? Was it him? With her being directly on the planet at the beginning of the game in that cutscene, she wants to know what happened for a very personal reason. But how does Cole know? Behind Cole's hologram, we can see a Mac cannon deploying and readying to shoot down the incoming ship into Callisto. Though your story ends here, please know that you have my respect. The ship is shot down by the Mac cannon and it comes crashing down onto the dock, with Jacob flying off the edge. With me responding when playing, <laughs> not knowing that my mic was unmuted at the time, I think I might be dead. 
And then this takes us nicely onto our next chapter. We crash land somewhere underground, a tunnel of some sort. Danny hacks into the tunnel system and she tells us that we're in Arcus. Arcus is a colony in which the prison was built upon a long, long time ago. The original colony of Callisto. But Danny said that we need answers. Why did Cole shoot down one of his own ships that we were trying to call in from orbit? How does all of this connect with Europa as well? The original colony was abandoned like the rest of the planet Callisto, until they built the prison on top of it, of course. We need to get through to the colony in order to get back into the top of Black Iron. Jacob doesn't obviously want to go back to the prison, but unfortunately there's no other option and that's the only way that we can get out of here. We make our way through and the hangar was still falling apart, and suddenly we fall straight through the floor, passing out. We wake up a short time later, with our feet tangled on a wire above with something coming and sticking out of the wall and walking straight past us. This thing seems like it can't see, only hear things. These beings though seem to be much, much older than what we'd seen in the prison. Like they were here way before the prison was even built. Could this be the reason that Callisto was originally abandoned? We finally reached the colony. It hadn't been inhabited for years absolute decades with each home looking like it was abandoned in a hurry almost like they were evacuated or just straight up ran off we finally reached danny and she hooked herself up to one of the colonists core on the back of their neck which allows her to relive all of their memories and understand what the hell happened here it turns out that this outbreak had already happened before around 75 years ago to this very same colony the exact same outbreak. These were no accidents. This was completely planned by someone. This is why the infection forms we encountered down here are much, much older. Because these infection forms are the colonists and the miners from the original outbreak. Was this Warden Cole's doing? We move through and come across a dome situated in the center of the colony below the prison. This looked to be some form of scientific research facility. This used to be used as the Callisto mineshaft, and the dome is covering something. But what? We walk into this dome, and it's named Arcus Station. We see a hologram of Marla, and it shows that this is a station whereby they look to research all of these beings, and that this has been going on for absolutely decades. It one day began with a distress call, one that came straight from the Callisto mineshaft. A form of accelerated evolution was found, a being of some sort. If they could understand the disease, they could reverse engineer it to understand the evolution of this species. After securing the site, a lab was built above it, and then on top of the lab, a prison. Black Iron was built so that all of the inmates could be tested upon with this project. This is the only reason the prison was built, and why nobody ever leaves it. After decades of research, the prize is near. They've almost reverse engineered the species. This must have been what Cole was referring to when he said that the end was near, that the work is almost completed. We walk further into the dome and suddenly are greeted with an alien species that's strung up and just lying there. This alien was found by the miners all those years ago and it was brought to the surface for investigation. This alien is and was dead at the time. However, within the stomach of this alien were millions of different larvas. This is what was released to reproduce and create the monsters, infecting all of the miners below and causing the original breakout 75 years ago. Whilst Marla was speaking though, Jacob notices the exact same cargo container that he was transporting on his ship. He opens it and at first all seems to be what is expected, just some medical supplies, until he lifts the first layer of the container up and there lay three vials. Jacob takes one, and opens it further and there he sees each container has one lava within. Was Jacob transporting these lavas from Callisto to Europa? Is this why Danny boarded his ship at the start of the game? Was Jacob the reason for the outbreak on Europa? Suddenly a person comes out of nowhere. It looked to be Ferris. 
he's fully or transformed or very near to transforming fully. However, his appearance had changed quite significantly. You can tell that this research has worked in some capacity and that he's been a part of this reverse engineering work without him even knowing at this time and Cole's been using him. As we escape Ferris though, an infection form grapples under Danny's face, placing the larva within her body and infecting her with this disease, resulting in her to start to turn. Our main goal from this point on was to find Marla and cure Danny of this infection. Although, when we open the window to look for the shoe, we can see just how fast this infection was spreading across the prison. Danny opens the door to get us back into Black Iron to try and find Marla. However, suddenly, we're ambushed by two security robots. We're knocked out and escorted back to our cell. However, Danny wasn't with us or in her cell. When we wake, we get a transmission from Marla herself. She had taken Danny and she is with her and safe. Marla wants to help us. Cole has gotten out of control and this was not what she was promised or part of the plan that she knew about. She wants Jacob to meet her at the lab where she has Danny and is looking after her in the meantime. One of the freakiest and probably one of the best parts of this playthrough for me was walking through the psych ward in this section. This was so, so cool. It freaked me out and this is the point of the thing where my, I started to think like, oh, some shit could go down here. The atmosphere was just amazing. We reach the lab and we look around. It affirms our thoughts earlier on. The prisoners in Black Iron were being tested. The prisoners in Black Iron were being tested. With two prisoners in cells in the lab. Being monitored on how fast they turn into these things. We find Danny and Marla and she injects her with something to take the pain away. This is where Jacob confronts Marla about the vials and the lavas. And that this caused everything that happened on Europa. Jacob wants to know exactly what Danny went through on Europa and why she's here essentially and, and what damage that it actually caused. So Marla syncs Danny's call with Jacob's to fill the gaps in the story as to what happened on Europa at the time. We wait for the sync to complete, but in the meantime, Marla tells us more about everything that we need to know. She has the, she has a vial full of a chemical. However, it needs to be synthesized by the Warden's Alpha. What is the Warden's Alpha? demonstrated a unique ability to synthesize the biofish, to control it. Yeah, I heard in the recording something about bigger, stronger. The next phase of human evolution. Unfortunately, he was killed during the Ark's sterilization. And now, the Warden seeks to replicate the conditions of the original Alpha, hoping to recreate Subject Zero as Subject Alpha. By releasing the virus in the prison? He would say evolution doesn't happen in a lab, it happens in the wild. Here, how can he do this? There's no way he can cover this up. He's not acting alone. He's part of a group. Dating back centuries, they seek to control the progress of human. She's, she's waking. During the original outbreak 75 years ago, there was a colonist known as Subject Zero, demonstrated the unique ability to synthesize a biophage. This colonist was bigger, stronger, the next phase of human evolution. However, Subject Zero was killed during the Arcus sterilization, and now the Warden seeks to replace the conditions of the original outbreak, hoping to recreate Subject Zero, and this time call it Subject Alpha. To do this, he releases the virus into the prison. Cole is working with a group in which predates centuries. They seek the guide to progress humanity's evolution. However, Cole was the one that covered this up and fed the information into the media, making it look like the Outerway terrorist organization was the cause behind all of this. Just the wrong place at the wrong time for Danny. We reach the Warden at the very top, and we see the Warden speaking to this cult group. All surrounding him and this table, with him being the main figure, and all of them wearing masks to hide their identities. He reiterates that the protocol is not about death, but is about life. Just give me the goddamn antidote. I'm not gonna let her die. Your friend. I've been watching you. You and your so-called friend. You're not the innocent you claim to be. You've proven that you'll do just about anything to ensure your own survival. 
And what about you, huh? Watching people die for fun, is that your protocol? No. You are mistaken, Mr. Lee. Protocol isn't about death. It's about life. Our future lies out there. Our destiny. If we were not built for life in space, this fragile shell holds us back. We have to evolve. We are to survive. And now, you'll all see why. Proof that my methods are worth the risk. Final contest to determine the true survival. Humanity or my alpha. However, suddenly, the Alpha shows up, and it turns out the Alpha is in fact Ferris. As I mentioned, Cole was testing on Ferris without him even knowing he was a part of the project, or this subject Alpha. We finally defeat the Alpha after he turned into this mega monster, and we take a sample from him. Ferris was a weak specimen, Cole said. In that sample is the key to unlocking a centuries-old dream. There was an escape pod waiting just behind him. This would take Jacob back to his old life. And if Jacob left the vial on the floor for Cole, they could both have what they wanted here. Jacob denies it and injects Danny, saving her from this plague. Suddenly, Cole initiates a self-destruct sequence throughout the tower and said that the Callisto Protocol will now enter phase two with the research they found out today. This will probably lead on to some form of DLC or some story progression within the season pass. And we rush upstairs to that life pod. However, we're greeted to the reality that there's only one. Jacob pushes Danny into the life pod and tells her that he's sorry for everything that's happened. transfer worked both ways. He learned more about me, and I learned more about him. In the chaos of the moment, I didn't realize he had also given me the evidence I was looking for all along. He sacrificed his life so that I could expose the truth. Was he trying to make up for the pain he caused, or just chasing some kind of redemption? Giving her the lava vial also, so that she can go back home and expose the truth as to what Cole was actually doing and that it wasn't her or her terrorist organization. Danny was set off into space and back to Europa and Jake and Jacob was left behind in Black Iron Prison. However, suddenly the camera cuts to Jacob. He's still alive and fought off all of the beings. Amala come out of nowhere in hologram form, stating that it could be another way out after all. So, in summary, Cole is the reason for the outbreak. He wanted to recreate the outbreak from 75 years ago in order to take the humanity's evolution further and make us into more superhumans and allow us to survive in space more. To do that, he transported these lavas into Jake's ship, who actually transported them to Europa, and that was the reason for the original outbreak. However, we managed to stop him. We killed the Alpha, but Phase 2 is coming, which means DLC will be around the corner. But let me know your thoughts and opinions down below of the story, everyone. What did you think of the story? Did it lack? Did you think it was good enough to be a brand new game with this much hype? And what did you think compared to Dead Space if any of you guys have played that too? As I mentioned, a full review for myself will be coming in the next couple of days. I have some very good things to say, but also some very bad things to say. So <laughs> we'll have to wait and see for that. But leave a like, everyone, if you did go on and enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel as well. And we'll see you all in the very next video.